Hello and welcome to an ATP geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan MS Pierce. This is a frontline update for the Ukraine war for the 7th of February 2023. Let's get to the Institute for the Study of War and American think tanks sort of discussion points before we hit the front line because it's kind of relevant. Ukrainian officials assess that Russian forces are preparing to launch a large scale uh, decisive offensive in eastern Ukraine in mid to late February but select Russian nationalist voices continue to express scepticism towards Russia's ability to launch a successful offensive past late February. The theories are, uh, you know, the offensives are going to be in the east. Well, everyone's in the east, really. Is it going to be Kremlin? Is it going to be Bakhmut? Is it going to be Kupiansk, Svatova? All these places are touted as potentials. Then you've got Vukladar down here. And then you've got, of course, places like Avdivka uh, around New York and Turetsk, uh, and possibly even Zaporizhia as well. So, yeah, everything seems to be on the cards. Although claims about Vukladar are probably a bit more substantial. They have troops there. And Kremlin uh, seems to be, again, more substantial. Okay, returning. Uh, and then you've got uh, issues between um, Prigozhin. So he's in charge of the Wagner PMC or Wagner PMC, I really should say. I really should say it properly. The Kremlin continues to deny Wagner Group financier uh, Prigozhin legitimacy and authority in Russia. Prigozhin's appeal to the Russian nationalist information space may be declining as he continues to overcompensate for the culmination of, Rus of Wagner's attack around Bakhmut. So he's got into a, a jet fighter and he's uh, flying around or doing a whole bit of talky talk in there having to go at Zelensky. Why is he feeling now's the time to do that? There must be a need. So the need is that he's losing in the information space against a Russian MOD. He needs to position himself as a bit of a winner. Uh, and, you know, he does stuff like that. Anyway, as for the actual front lines, let's get to it. Okay, let's hit the northeast sector, Kupyansk to Kremina, uh, sorry, to Svatova to Kremina. On my map, that looks like this. We've got Kupyansk here, we've got Svatova there, and we've got uh, the highway going up to Kupyansk. There's been a lot of um, talk of this area just to the north of Kupyansk. We've got Dvorichna here, uh, which is kind of the other the other half of Tavolzhanka sort of goes into Tvorichna. Uh, and then we've got uh, Hirenikivka and Horobivka. So I think that the Russians are still sort of halfway into Horobivka and they're, they are digging in in Hirenikivka. Here in Kivka. They are fighting on the western outskirts of Dorichna as well. I think there's geolocated footage to suggest that. So lots to say from the ISW. So Russian forces likely made tactical gains northeast of Kupiansk. Um, and some sources claim that they have taken Tinkivka, which is just down here to the south of Liman Pershi, on the way to Kupiansk, getting sort of much closer to Kupiansk. Kupiansk is already in uh artillery range so this is all not great news for the uh, ukrainians the russians claim they broke through ukrainian defenses in drurichna and established positions on the western outskirts and that's confirmed by geolocated footage um, the ukrainian general staff did not report that ukrainian forces repelled russian attacks in these areas between the 5th and 6th of february so that's interesting. So they, they're they not saying they repelled them. That means that the Russians probably have made those gains. Russian sources claim that Russian forces advanced west of previous positions on the Svatova Kremlin line. Okay, so now let's go down. Well, let's have a look and see what Null Report says of this area. North and northeast of Dorichna, fighting is reportedly ongoing since last night Russian forces went on a local offensive trying to seize the area and take control of the bridgehead near Dorichna. Uh, reinforcements were also noted in Novoherovka and its surroundings. So here we have, no report says it all is grey zone, uh, uh, but there is fighting towards Dvorichna. Uh, Ukrainians, he says, control Haryanivka and Horobivka more than I would say they do. I'd say that's a bit more contested, uh, but doesn't think that uh, Sinkivka down here was taken by the Russians. Point being that there is um, some uh, fighting going on up there, Defamon says the Russians are trying to advance in the Sinkivka area. Rooms are they had some small gains. The status is unclear at this point. This is a minor attack, if I understand it correctly. So there you go. Fighting going on up there in this area north of Kupiansk. Then as no reports says, coming down a little bit further south, we have uh, attacks on Novosilivka from Kuzumivka. 
uh, and possibly artillery attacks from around there to take to take out the or attempt to take out the Ukrainians in Novosilivska. Uh, they, they've been trying to get Kuzmivka, but it, it's been really slow going. Part of the issues for attacking forces around these areas is the mines. So there there are claims that, and we'll see that in a second, oh, sorry, that as the Russians try and make their movements to the west in this area, uh, just north of Kremlin, Kremlin to Svatova axis, they are having to contend with coming across a lot of mines. We've seen mines take out tanks. I, I showed you actually the video of that in the Vukodai area. So the Ukrainians are you know when you're in defense you you can just lay uh, a shed load of mines and uh, obviously that's particularly useful for when the uh, russians attack um so uh, russian sources according to the isw claim that russian forces have advanced west of previous positions on the svatova kremlin line um and that they are have made unspecified uh russian elements have made advances through the serebianka forest south of dubrova and the elements of the 144th Motorized Rifle Division are clearing mines in an unspecified area near Yampolivka. This mill blogger also reported that elements of the 3rd Motorized Rifle Division pushed Ukrainian forces from unspecified high ground around the Makivka Ploschanka Nevska line. Uh, a different Russian mill blogger reported that Russian forces attacked in the direction of Nevska, and the Ukrainian general staff reported that Ukrainian forces repelled Russian attacks near Kremlin and Shiplivka, but did not mention repelling attacks further west near Yampolivka or Nevska. This is interesting again. Um, the so the Russians have said sorry, the Ukrainians have said they haven't repelled attacks around this area, but did repel attacks um, around here in the forest area. Which means to say that possibly the Russians have made these advances near Makivka, uh, near Nevska. I have put some advances for the Russians going further west here. This line here uh, approaching Makivka and just north to Nova Vodjanie, uh, Ploschchanka as well, a little bit further west there. The, r apparently the Ukrainians have done a counterattack around here, just south of Ploschchanka on this high ground in the Zaravka Gully area. Uh, Rebar says in the Liman sector, Russian forces took control of Ukrainian outposts towards Yampolivka. Russian troops pushed Ukrainian units from a tactically important hill near Makivka. Heavy fighting continues near the Zaravka Gully, where Russian forces are repelling counter attacks. So there is fierce fighting going on uh, around here, north of Kremlin. This is where either the Russian offensive is taking place or reconnaissance in force for you know as a precursor to the offensive uh, we we should expect russia to make gains around here slowed up by things like mines and by resistance but you know don't think it's the end of the world if russia do take uh, territory in this area in their counter attack it's, it's how much they take how easy it is how much they 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 bleed and where that leaves them at the end of that as far as exhausting themselves and vulnerable to a counter attack so the successes may actually work in favour, weirdly may work in favour of Ukraine. And this isn't just me coping. I mean, this is what we, we can see. This is the Ichigo in the China-Japan, where Japan exhausted themselves. Uh, and basically, again, it's a kind of form of Pyrrhic victory where they yeah took a load of ground and then they found that they had nothing left and yeah end up losing from there on in so if russia take a load of ground but expend too much of their forces and, and capacity then they are ripe for the picking in terms of a counter attack okay let's go further down south towards solidar and and bakhmut let's go first to bilirivka just south of the forest south of kremina uh, Defmon here says the Ukrainians repulsed an attack in the area of Verknokomyanska, just south of Bilirivka. Fighting is ongoing in the Kremlin area. Russians have mostly moved into the grey zone west of Kremlin and are trying to push the Ukrainians back in the forest southwest of Kremlin without any success. Nor, uh, Nor reports says fierce battles. Russian troops are on the attack northeast and south of Kremlin for the time being without too much Russian success, which failed on well prepared defensive lines. Bilirivka is Ukraine. An attack on Verk Nokomyansk was repelled. Uh, Rebar doesn't say too much. So that is, uh, Bilirica is super important. If the Russians want to uh, take Siversk, then they need to take Bilirica really. Uh, and if the Ukrainians want to do an encirclement of Kremlin, they need to retain Bilirica. So although it's completely flattened, it does have a tactical 
uh, you know, utility for this area. Attacks around here that you've seen um, repelled attacks from the Russians. And then we come down to uh, the Bakhmut Solidar area. Okay, first thing to say about Bakhmut area, that apparently supply to the city continues. Uh, Ukrainian troops are maintaining supply to their grouping in Bakhmut despite constant Russian shelling of critical roads. Uh, Prigozhin, uh, who's in charge of the Wagner Group, has noted that fierce battles are occurring in Bakhmut and emphasized that Ukrainian troops are not withdrawing from any part of the city, indicating that Ukrainian command has not yet deemed the threat of encirclement imminent or exigent. I would go on to say that... Uh, Possibly there is an operation withdrawal of the uh, eastern side. So as I've talked to you before, there's this river that goes down the middle. And I think that they are, well, there are some claims that they are sort of withdrawing from this area. And you'll see that the north and the east, uh, the Russians are making gains. In fact, this area here, as no report says, is about 50-50 control now. Uh, the war mapper doesn't have that sort of reflected in their map. As you can see, the northern suburbs, they are the Russians have definitely made some serious gains. Anyway, uh, Ukrainians have claimed to have shot down a Su-25 by a man-paired Russian Su-25 Su in the Bakhmut area. That's not the first of the last sort of week or so that's been uh, taken down. We're going to look just north here. So uh, this is Solodar going on to the Solodar with Blahadatne. Um, and further north of there, we have Mikhailiv Mikhailivka and Vasyukivka. Right. So there is this move towards Seversk in the north here. Uh, so the Ukraine, the Russians are trying to push through Fedoriv, uh, Fedorivka and Rozdolivka to get towards um, Seversk. R Russian MD is claiming the volunteer units have taken Mikhailivka as opposed to Wagner. So there's still that internal battle going on between those two entities. The Russians are fighting, it seems, on the outskirts of uh, Vazyukivka at the moment. So there have been advances here uh, for the Russians. And as we come further down south, they have made further inroads into the possibly the trench network, but certainly the heights to, uh, towards the west of this road. Uh, and Blahadatne, so they've made gains west of Blahadatne. Now, uh, apparently, and this is coming from an ISW map app, actually, uh, the OSINT defender has, has has reported. Within the last several hours, it's been said that the Russian and Wagner forces have crossed, so this is from this morning, have crossed the E-40 highway between the cities of Bakhmut and Slovyansk, while VDV units are also said to have entered the settlement of Berkivka with heavy fighting being reported. So this is here. Here it looks like they are attacking from up here, uh, across the road, that they're probably from here um, into Berkivka. Uh, and that leaves Krasnohora as this. If that is, is happening, then you possibly have a, an encirclement of Ukrainian forces here. And th that that creates you know a bit of a problem because they have been defending Krasnohora quite uh, staunchly. Um, but if, if we have a look at this map... Here you can you can imagine all these troops getting stuck in um, an encirclement if if this is successful. One to watch closely over the next day. Uh, no report says Wagner continues to push the north and eastern suburbs. Zapamutka district east is 50-50. That's what I was telling you. Krasnohora and Pauskovivka are still Ukrainian. However, they could be being encircled as we speak. South of uh, at Ivanivska and Stopochki, the, the situation is under control. The T0504 is Ukrainian control. West of Opitny, fighting is now fierce. Actually, there are claims that the that the Russians are within one kilometer now of that uh, road, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, Defamon says the Ukrainians repulse attacks in the area of Vazyukivka, Paraskovivka, Bakhmut, and Ivanivska. Russians are trying to advance north of Solodar in, in, in order to envelop Seversk. Um, status of Krasnohora is unclear. It was not mentioned by the Ukrainian general staff today. And Rebar says that West of Solidar, uh, Wagner force advances, forces advance from Blaudatne and the train station at Sil uh, towards Ukrainian outposts in the hills and in Vazyukivka, aiming to capture the Ukrainian positions on the dominant heights. And they are making inroads there by the looks of it. North of Bakhmut, near Paratikovivka and Krasnohora, fighting continues. The AFU partially withdrew the 46th Brigade in territorial defence to Slavyansk, after which the defence is crumbling. Russian units are pushing through the Ukrainian fortification from the north and from Stupki. So this is the idea that the 
Ukrainians have pulled troops out to sort of reconstitute more or they were getting too hard hit. And as a result of, you know, rotating or withdrawing, the defensives have crumbled as according to Rebar here in this sort of northern area. And the Stupki area, which is, I think, this area here is under a lot of uh, pressure. In fact, that's mainly... Well, yeah. So, I mean, all of these northern and eastern areas are just under huge amounts of pressure. Um, in northern Bakhmut, uh, Russian units advanced near the meatpacking plant and took over the building materials factory south of Krasnohora. In southern Bakhmut, a residential area in the Sobachevsky district is being stormed. The zone of control near the cemetery, by the nearby the cemetery was expanded. Um, so on and so forth. Uh, it says here that the AFU. Uh, operating Bakhmut plans to conduct a counterattack with two battalions in several areas to stall for time. Um, west of Bakhmut, Wagner reached the Chazid Yar Road, now under fire control. Goodness, right. Okay, so all sorts of details. Let's go and look at that on my map. So as we come out of here, uh, we we zoom back in. There's a, a, a lot of territory being lost to the Russians in this northern district here. Uh, there's going to be pressure now from Pidorodny and down from sort of north, especially of Krasnohora and Paraskovivka fall uh, anytime soon. Then you're looking like this northern area being under a lot of pressure and Yahidne uh, as well. And then we have expanded territory to the south near the cemetery. So this is a cemetery here, uh, this area, and the Russians have made gains around there, as you can see reflected in my map there. And that's sort of the west of Opitny. And of course, up here again, I don't have too much of the exact details of, of what uh, territory has been lost or gained in these eastern districts. Again, I, I said that to you yesterday, just the details uh, are fairly thin on the ground, other than, you know, they're suffering a bit. So this is what Andrew Perpetua says, near Ivanivska, Russian forces are fighting in the forests along the canal. Russians are worried about an impending counterattack and vulnerability of their flank along this canal, which they have had limited success in crossing. So here you can see he's got um, Ivanivska here, Klyshchivka there, that the Russians have made some advances and they really are on the same sort of latitude uh, uh, as Ivanivska there. So if we come down we over to here, this is to say... It pretty much what I've got here. Ivanivska, maybe they've made these advances. There's some claims that, you know, Rebar says this is fully under, you know, what, range, ranges from fire control to actual control. Um, this road there, that's not going to be used for as a main supply route. You're going to be seeing this road being used. But of course, if the Russians, as soon as they get this road, then they just march on to the next one. So it is just this enclosing net. Now, the theory could well be that the, the, they let the Russians make gains around here and then hit them back with, with a counterattack and then cut them off. I mean, that could be something they could do. It depends whether they're expending all their efforts in defending rather than holding things back for a, for a potential counterattack. I would think a counterattack would be useful for the Ukrainians. Of course it would. You know, if they had the ability to do that, that would really set the Russians back. They've made these gains, hit them with a counterattack, and then it, it could, if it's successful, could really cause uh, a few headaches. But yes, yeah, certainly lots of um, territory being gained in the uh, Bakhmut area. Kenneth Gregg says about this, Bakhmut is holding up surprisingly well. He's a Swedish soldier fighting there. He has been in Bakhmut. I don't think he's there right now. Bakhmut is holding up surprisingly well to my surprise. Since the front lines are at a standstill, I want to use the rest of the update to analyze the enemy's strategy. It looks like they love open landscapes because that's exactly what they're allowed to uh, what they are allowed to go into. In doing so, they expose themselves to heavy losses, both at Krasnohora and south of Bakhmut militarily wise. It is absolutely insane to do this, especially with no tactical advantages gained. They don't threaten the supply lines at all in the areas they have occupied. The expected major offensive, now the question should be asked, what kind of offensive? A tactical offensive will never happen in which different weapon teams support each other with attacks on several front lines in order to support the common goal. So a combined arms army attack offensive such an offensive needs a well-trained and educated army which is completely lacking in the current structure so the only alternative is to make a big bang and run a massive personal at personal attack is being attempted on all fronts but where well all over open countryside this is the case at Kremlin, donbass luhansk and zaporizhia equipment and accessories are missing on both sides neither the enemy nor 
our guards have any considerable amounts to speak of, then it becomes a matter of precision shooting, and there we have an advantage. Um, and in fact, I'll go. Well, I'll go. I'll talk about this now because actually we're going to move on to there. Uh, service of existing materials. Since we have home ground and a shorter logistical path than the enemy, we have an advantage here as well. The missile threat to our infrastructure looks to be diminishing as we have strengthened air defences and the enemy's rockets are dwindling. Let's look at the stats. between Oct In October, 210 missiles. November, 190. December, 235. January, 90. Since in December they went all in and failed, there's no probability of a major missile attack with more than 200 missiles for the next few months. That's, that's fascinating to me, that statistic. So since the enemy now have both political and economic pressure to show results, it's a bang-on tactic, and it's already began. begun. Since we still have to wait for the weapons from the West, the war will be settled using old Soviet military hardware. As both sides have these, motivation will be the key factor, and that is in our favour. Okay, so interesting point about precision, the use of precision military being an... Uh, sorry, precision equipment being an advantage for the Ukrainians. Other... Otherwise, you know, it's much of a muchness in terms of equipment until they get that large amount of, of, of Western equipment. Well, in the Bakhmut area, the Russians are using the tactics of throwing um, human beings at, at the front lines, and that is working at the moment. That calculation is working in the Russian favour, and they are making uh, those slow, painful gains. Uh, let's come on to Avdivka now. So there has been attacks around Kamyanka, uh, uh, Vaseli, and uh, down towards the, the south here. So if we go to Andrew Perpetua's maps here, uh, in the Abdivka area, Russia attacked Vaseli in the north, Kamyanka, and near the highway in the south. However, none of these attacks succeeded, and the attack in the south came with considerable casualties. So there is uh, um, video footage of quite a lot of equipment being lost in the Abdivka area. So here, yeah, we have... Uh, Russia trying to put on pressure again around Avdivka because we haven't seen this now for a good week. Um, we have seen attacks towards Siverne and they have made some progress in the Vodjanie area. Uh, so let's look to see what um, uh, Andrew Perpetua says about this. Russian forces are actively trying to push north from the Vodjanie and Elputnie area towards Siverne. They have made some progress. That's over the last sort of week. Um, let's have a look at ISW. ISW says all the usual places are Pitney, Povomuski, Severny, uh, Vaseli, Krasnohorivka, Novelsky. Uh, so there, there is a lot of activity now uh, going on around um, Abdivka. Uh, and Defmon then adds uh, the same, but says below the, the Russian attempts to encircle Abdivka has very little. Uh, has had very little to no progress in the area. Slight progress in the direction of Siverny could be noted. In other words, just what I was saying before, that the only kind of um, advance has been in this sort of direction. I don't know how much, I don't know how far they have advanced here. I've changed my maps to have a little bit more Russian territory just uh, around the Opitny, just north of the Opitny, as they attack towards Sviony from there and from Fodjanie. But otherwise, yeah, not, not a lot to say about Abdivka. Uh, we do come down to Marinka, and there is a little bit, uh, a few claims going on about Marinka. Let's go to Rebar first. You remember, Rebar has consistently said fighting is on the western outskirts of Marienka. So Rebar now says Battle of Marienka has its own separate one. As a result, the fighting company of the 79th Brigade was practically destroyed. Over a dozen Ukrainian men were taken prisoner. The commander of the 79th Brigade withdrew units to preserve to reserve positions and reinforce them with newly arrived personnel. Let's look at the, the Rebar map. Remember, there's been fighting on the western outskirts of Marienka and then we look at the map here of Marienka and it looks like oh it's the center still it's exactly as it has been a, perhaps just a little bit of gray zone up there in a kind of north uh, western area and this part that I told you about yesterday but the western outskirts is not attacked you know even their own map contradicts what they've been saying it's just uh, it's just annoying but anyway I think there is some some added pressure on the U Ukrainians in Marienka. The Russian armed forces continue steadily advancing from the south, taking advantage of the disorganization in the ranks of the FU after the breakthrough. Fighting resumed in, in the center and the northeast of the city. So not the western outskirts. So just 
the center and the northeast of the city. Okay, Russian assault groups are supported by tank and artillery units. There's no admission here that that he's got anything wrong. That he's that basically he's been talking absolute nonsense in the last week. But there is definitely something going on in in Marienka. It isn't as uh, I think uh, you know as stable as it was previously. Um, Andrew Perpetua says in the Marinka area, Russian forces are attacking Krasnoharivka, which is, uh, I believe, these are just probing attacks. So that Krasnoharivka, just to let you know, is north of Marinka up there, and they've been attacking there for some time. Um, he goes on to say there's active fighting in the south of Marinka where Russian troops are have crossed the Drisby Avenue to capture a small industrial area. I talked to you about that yesterday. They are also pushing toward Pobieda and in the general direction of Nova Mokhailivka, which they have done. Yeah, that's nothing un uh, unusual. So there is, you know, this this fighting that's going on in Marinka that is slightly more uh, troublesome for the Ukrainians. I mean, just remember that this is completely destroyed. It's a devastated uh, settlement. Uh, but they they do have this uh, purchase in the in the south of Marinka. And they, that might enable them to attack Marienka from two flanks now, as I explained yesterday. So we'll keep an eye on Marienka, see if anything comes from that. Uh, Pobieda attacks towards there. Nova Mikhailivka attacks towards there. And then we get down to Vukladar again, where it was a very bad day for the Russians yesterday. So just to remind you of Vukladar, it's on the high ground here in this area. It has line of sight down to Pavlivka, to uh, Mikhailov. Uh, Mikilska, sorry, and uh, the Russians have been trying to get this. They they tried the, to attack it in November, got completely repulsed, and the 155th Naval Infantry Brigade was decimated. They have been reconstituted and are attacking again, but they're trying to do it from two directions, but still not working. They're still losing day after day after day. Uh, there is this um, saying, uh, was it the Einstein that said, uh, the definition of, of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Well, the strategy of the Russian Marine Brigades around Vukladar amazes me, says War Monitor. How could you possibly think attacking the same place every day from the same direction uh, around the same time would give a different result when artillery is pre-sighted? It's just insane. So the artillery know where they are, right? They, the Russians have been unable to take out the Ukrainian artillery, which is particularly effective in this area. You know, all the way back here, being able to hit with precise uh, shells, Excalibur shells and whatnot, and all sorts, uh, and just really well sighted from line of sight and drone, uh, and yet you continue to attack in the same place. Rebar says, positional fighting and artillery duels continue near Vukladar. If you command is bringing in reserves to fortify the city and to make up for the losses. So, oh, the U Ukrainians are on the back foot here. They're making up for losses. Doesn't mention anything about the fact that the Russians took massive losses there yesterday. Uh, Tadragami, who's got sources on the ground there, I think, says, uh, great news throughout the day, the enemy attempted a series of assaults in Vukladar's direction. Up to 30 armoured vehicles in, of different types have been either damaged or completely destroyed. Hopefully videos will be released soon to public. We've got some footage of that. Uh, the current situation around Vukladar is stable. The enemy continues assaults with small infantry groups covered by artillery and indirect tank fire. However, without any success, the enemy is hesitant to perform large-scale attacks. At the same time, it's important not to rush to conclusions based on large concentrations because the quality of reserves is lower than the quality of destroyed units. 155th and 40th brigades, as an example. While the enemy continues to saturate the area with artillery and infantry, it's unclear whether the enemy is planning to develop another large-scale offensive with lower quality troops or concentrate more troops to make tactics. Tactical, small tactical advancements so yeah and then we look at like confirming some of these claims so here's the one i've already showed you which is um in in this morning's video uh three tanks getting taken out by anti-tank mines in the area that you know three tanks lost all in one hit is is bad news right um or, or several sort of uh mine hits and then we have this footage um it's just a, a screen grab i'd like to see drone footage of this because one would assume it, it, there might be more material you know out of the frame but here you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen possibly possibly more uh pieces of material taken out apparently um and that goes towards you know the the claim that 30 bits of equipment have been uh, damaged or destroyed
Uh, no report says no changes in Vukodar's situation is clearly in the hands of the Ukrainian, thanks to the 72nd Me Mechanized Brigade, who I think are pretty well regarded. Today, a large Russian column is said to have been decimated near the approaches to Vukodar, waiting for further confirmation. Uh, so looking bad for the Ukrainians around, uh, sorry, for the Russians around Vukodar. ISW just adds uh, that a reserve Ukrainian reserve officer has noted that Russian units fighting the area, the 155th and 40th Naval Infantry Brigades, pretty decent supposedly uh, brigades, are largely destroyed. As far as the rest of Zaporizhia goes, or moving into Zaporizhia even, uh, there is fighting around uh, uh, several places. So if we go to Andrew Perpetua, talks about in the Zaporizhia region, minor fighting around Dorozhnyanka, south of Hulayapol, and Nestorianka, south of Orokhiv. Uh, so if you want to look on his map there, uh, Hulayapol, and then south of Orokhiv. Oops, no, that's a completely wrong word on me. Uh, and here, south of Orokhiv in Nestorianka. So just to let you know on my map where that is, if we come if we come out here, uh, Dorozhnyanka is there, south of Hulayapol. Um, and then we come to Orokhiv here. And you have Nestorianka just to the south uh, west. So that yeah, so small fighting going on there. Uh, there's some interesting claims of Kherson from Herman Yuk, the uh, spokesperson, um, who says uh, overnight the Ukrainian military destroyed two Russian sabotage groups and two enemy boats. This happened in the areas of the islands on the Dnipro River the same night. Two enemy strongholds on the Kinburn Spit were destroyed, Operational Command South. So that's interesting, the idea that uh, some places on the peninsula, whether that's the spit part or the peninsula as a whole, I'm not sure. Um, but there are some sort of counterclaims. Uh, Ukrainian forces continued limited attempts across the Dnipro River. Geolocated combat footage, says ISW, published on February the 5th, showed Russian artillery striking a Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance group near Krula Lake on the Dnipro River Delta. The Russian military of defense, Ministry of Defense claimed that Russian forces defeated Ukrainian reconnaissance elements near there on February the 1st, so some time ago. But, you know, there is stuff going on, it seems, every, every night and every day on that river delta it is quite an active um area in fact you know yesterday we had uh Syriac maps saying that ukrainians had gained uh, this area here you know so they um they had this under control of the ukrainians like that so uh, i probably will keep it um in that way because um that's a pro-Russian source, so that's likely true if they're making that claim about Ukrainian gains. Uh, anyway, yeah, so th that's what's been happening. Usual sort of high mars. High mars are still active. There is stuff going on behind the lines. There's talk um, or there's evidence that on the Arabat spit, but I'm not sure exactly where on the spit. There's a fortified base that's now being constructed by the Russians. Uh, of course, that could be anywhere down that spit. That's reported by the ISW as well. Anyway, thank you for your support. Please like, subscribe and share. Uh, take care and I will speak to you later.